You know, as I was designing a space, I was really trying to keep my client in mind. I wanted this space to feel like a bachelor pad, but I also wanted it to just be an inspiring space for him as well. This is just a really nice functional space for my client. And what I like about it is that we did a lot of heavier colors in this room, they're darker. So anywhere I could do some open shelving to make it feel a little more light and airy, I think it was really important to implement that. You know, I really love these double islands. You has got this cool industrial sink, concrete countertops. I just feel like this is a great space for entertaining. A lot of the times when you have one large island, you've got to walk all the way around. So I think with this, even though this kitchen is really large, these two islands really help define the space. One of my other favorite things about the kitchen is the recessed ceiling above. A lot of the times in these older houses that we're doing renovations on, you see this recessed ceiling with fluorescent lighting in them. This is just a simple way to update that look. The reclaimed wood in here ties really well with all the open shelving and these islands. I just think this kitchen is a great balance of modern and ranch. There's not too much of either style, but I think it's just a really perfect blend. And I feel like even though we chose darker colors, it still has a light and airy way about it. To my surprise, in the fall of my senior year, I was actually elected as our high school's homecoming queen. I remember walking out on the football field to be crowned, thinking how radically different this feeling was from the rejection I'd felt just two years prior, hiding in the bathroom stalls at lunchtime. I was thankful my high school career had ended on a good note. I felt there was redemption in my heart from an old wound that had never truly healed. A few years later, I graduated from Baylor University as a communication major, traveled to New York, and finally got rid of the second grade chip on my shoulder. After all those years of failing to understand or embrace what an honor it was to be part of my mom's amazing culture, I finally believed it was actually a beautiful thing to be unique and to be different. And as much as I loved shopping at my store, some of my best customers kept saying, yeah, you should think about taking some time off. Maybe close up the shop for a while because this is a moment in time you'll never get back. Don't work too much. Just make sure you're all in with your baby. I didn't listen at first. What new mom does? It seems as if every day lasts forever when you're up all night with feedings and changing smelly diapers. But the more I heard those words, the more they started to sink in. Toward the end of 2005, Chip came across an opportunity to buy a nice lot just up the road from where we lived. He knew how cramped we were in that little white house, and even though he'd felt as though any money we made should be reinvested in the business and rolled into the next project, he asked me one day if maybe we should invest in building a house of our own. Yes, I said. I, I really love the idea. Chip was pretty certain he could get the financing together for the house if we bought the land, but the parcel of land was $5,000, and he wasn't sure how we were going to get it before somebody else snatched it up. That's when I surprised him. Ever since the jail incident, I had been saving a little money here and there from my sales at the shop. I just set it away where neither of us would touch it until there was something important to use it on, just for us. The amount of money I'd saved was exactly $5,000, just what we needed to buy that land. So we went for it, and together we designed a comfortable 1,600-square-foot home from the ground up. I loved designing this home from the beginning stages. I learned that unlike the older homes we had renovated, a new home doesn't come with oak floors, thick trim, and built-in character. And I learned pretty quickly that adding character was expensive. If I wanted our place to be special and unique, I had to get creative. On the exterior, for instance, we wanted rock, but only could afford enough for the front of the house. So we added larger trees in the landscape to hide the side elevation and draw attention to the front door. The very next week, I got back to work. I needed to get back in the shop and start making some sales to recoup the money we'd pulled out for bail and then to pay off the rest of those tickets. I didn't have a babysitter or the money to pay one, so I started working every day with a two-week-old baby. We set up a little nursery area in the back office with a pack-and-play portable crib, and I worked the register with Drake and his baby Bjorn. I would run to the back of the office to feed him, and then, of course, a customer would walk in, so I'd have to wrap up the feeding session, which would make him cry. I knew I needed to get some help at the shop. I couldn't do all of this by myself anymore. Thank God for Jessica. She was a good friend from college, one of the two sets of twins in our wedding, and best of all, she was available. I hired her on to assist behind the register, and that gave me a little bit of freedom. Jessica had a way about her that made every customer feel warm and welcome. I was thankful for her diligence and friendship during that time when I was both a new mom and a new business owner. Just as Drake turned six weeks old, I decided I wanted to lose some baby weight. Chip and I were both still getting used to the idea that we had a baby of our own now, but I felt it was okay to leave him with Chip for half an hour or so in the morning so I could take a short run up and down 3rd Street. I left Drake in the little swing he loved, kissed Chip goodbye, and off I went. 
Chip was so sweet and supportive. When I got back, he was standing in the doorway saying, way to go, Jojo. He handed me a banana and asked if I had had any cramps or anything, and I hadn't. I actually felt great. I walked in and discovered Chip had prepared an elaborate breakfast for me, as if I had run a marathon or something. I hadn't done more than half a mile walk run, but he wanted to celebrate the idea that I was trying to get myself back together physically. He'd actually driven to the store and back and bought fresh fruit and real maple syrup and orange juice for me. I sat down to eat and I looked over at Drake. He was sound asleep in a swing, still wearing nothing but his diaper. Chip, did you take Drake to the grocery store without any clothes on? Chip gave me a real funny look and he said, what? I gave him a funny look back. Oh my goodness, he said. I totally forgot Drake was here. He was so quiet. Chip, I yelled, totally freaked out. I was a first-time mom. Can you imagine? Anyone who's met Chip knows he can get a little sidetracked. But this was our child. He was in that dang swing that made him perfectly silent. I felt terrible. It had only been a few minutes, and you know the store was just down the street, but I literally got on my knees and begged Joe's forgiveness. Several days later, I decided to go on a good long jog, trusting that Chip would not leave Drake again. As I was on my way back, I saw Chip coming down the road in his truck with a trailer on it. He rolled up to me with his window down and said, Hey, Joe, you're doing so good. I'm heading to work now. I've got to go. I looked in the back thinking, of course he's got Drake, but I didn't see a car seat. Chip, where's Drake? She said. And I was like, oh, shoot. She took off without a word and ran like lightning all the way back to the house as I turned the truck around. She literally got there faster on foot than I did in my truck. I sure hope no one from Child Protective Services listens to this book. They can't come after me retroactively, can they? Chip promised it would never happen again. So the third time I attempted to take a run, I went running down 3rd Street and made it all the way home. I walked in, and Chip and Drake were gone. I thought, oh, good. Finally, he remembered to take the baby. But then I noticed his car was still parked out front. I looked around. I couldn't find him anywhere. Moments later, Chip pulled up on his four-wheeler with Drake bungee strapped to the handlebars in his car seat. Chip, I screamed, what in the heck are you doing? Oh, he was crying, and I'd always heard my mom say she would drive me around the neighborhood when I was a baby, and it made me feel better, Chip said. He loved it. He fell right asleep. He didn't love it, Chip. He probably fell asleep because the wind in his face made it impossible to breathe. I didn't go for another run for the whole first year of Drake's life, and I took him to the shop with me every single day. Some people might see that as a burden, but I have to admit, I loved it. Having him in that baby Bjorn was the best feeling in the world. Drake was a shop baby. He would come home every night smelling like candles. We had these friends who owned this barbecue joint, and their baby always came home smelling like a rack of ribs. You know, I like Drake's smell a whole lot better. A lot of my clientele seemed to have kids who were older, and I swear every single one of those moms would smile and coo over Drake, saying, Joanna, this goes by so fast. You need to embrace these moments. My kids are getting ready to go off to college, and it feels just like yesterday they were a little like this. 